he could, he could kill you. But you know what? He, he was afraid to hit anybody because he was so strong. He, he, was, a, he was a good Marine. Boy. Well, every Marine was a rifleman. But we like it or not, there were riflemen. Now, they, uh, they went into machine gunners, they went into mortars and that, but you're a rifleman because that's, that's, that's a tra tradition of the Marine Corps. To go in and fight hand to hand, fight, uh, fight man on man. That's, that's a tradition. It's still like that to this present yeah, day. Yeah, just like uh, cowboys and Indians. You're out in the jungle, you know? And uh, every Marine was a, was a rifleman. I don't care what he did afterwards, but he was, he was a rifleman. They trained him with that rifle first. Always. Okay, now after, after your action on Iwo Jima, um, did, they, uh, did you stay on Iwo Jima? Did you no, no, they, they go back on board ships? Went back, to, went back to Guam. Back to Guam? See, we worked out of Guam. We went back to Guam, and they uh, they brought in uh, a bunch of new Marines, and we started right away training for our next for our next island, and the next one was supposed to be Japan, and we was we was already started to train on that, and they they brought them in right away, and we tried we started training, but uh, you know there was there was a lot of the old Marines wasn't there no more. See, they got. Killed, we got wounded. We lost, uh, we lost uh, a lot of Marines on that island. Mm -hmm. Seven thousand died there, and twenty-nine thousand was wounded on that island. Now, that's a lot of people. They pretty annihilated us. We annihilated them pure Marines, but they darn near annihilated us. They had thirty-three thousand Japanese on that island. And 32 of them died there. 1,000 Marines, uh, 1,000 Imperial Marines made it back home. Now that's they surrendered. And, uh, that's an awful, that's an awful loss for yeah. both sides. Yes, it is for both sides. But I, uh, I met a lots and lots of nice people from from down south. A lot of southern guys joined the Marine Corps, and uh, there was a there was a lot of a lot of people out of Chicago joined the Marine Corps. The fact is, we had uh, we had uh, you know the Marine Corps had uh, had all uh, priests. There was no there's no chaplain for other denominations there. The priest took care of it all. Of course, they, you know, they didn't have enough to go to Europe and all over, didn't have that enough people. Uh, but I'll tell you one thing, they, 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 priests, they had a lot of pool boys, they, they, and they, they did. Because I always remember one time I, I wanted to go to confession, I wanted to go to, to communion. And uh, if the word come down that uh, we get paid Sunday morning, and if you ain't there, you ain't gonna get paid. And I hadn't been paid for three months, and I, of course, I didn't get much money. I mean, back then you didn't get nothing to speak of. Well, but you got five dollars. I drew five dollars. Five dollars a month. Yeah, the rest of went home. Well, what was your actual? Fifty-four dollars. Fifty-four dollars a month. Now, what, what was your actual base? Fifty-four. Fifty-four. Did they give you anything for um, um, uh, what they call hazardous hazardous no, duty combat? No, back they those didn't days? do that. They didn't do that back them days. <laughs> and they didn't until after the war probably, but all the time I was under hell, I was in combat all the time. I didn't get no extra money. But uh, anyway, I was gonna tell you, we, uh, I went to confession that night and I asked, uh, I asked the priest, I says, uh, in the second battalion, what time do you hold the mass? I says, I, uh, I'll go to confession and I wanna go, go to communion. He says, uh, why? He said, why don't you go here? And I said, well, the word's down that if we ain't, we're getting paid tomorrow, and if we ain't there, we, we don't get paid. He says, wait a minute. He left for a little bit, and he come back, he says, you go here, or you come here, you get paid. He would call somebody on the phone. 
and we did. They paid us. We went to church, and they paid us afterwards. That's how much power they had. And and uh, we had uh, the priest went with us when we hit the Ewo. He uh, he was from New York, and you know he followed us right on in, and he went right in the foxholes with me. Right in any any when we call foxholes, if they threw a shell and made a hole. We we'd get in there because we learned uh, we learned how they had their they had their setups. They would fire here, here, and go over there and follow here and here, and follow fire in the middle. And that's how they that's how they gauged their their uh, their uh, mortars and their their big shells. And uh, when when they hit here, we knew we could get back into that hole over there. Because they ain't coming back there again until they hit the rest of them. So that's where we figured them. We figured them guys out, see, and that's how we got there. And but I remember this whole coming in. There was about four of us down in there, and here comes that priest. He got down in there and he looked over at me and he said, "You know, lions ain't gonna be no heathens in the foxholes tonight, are they?" <laughs> he was scared too. Oh hell, it's something to be scared of. We had one guy that wouldn't uh, wouldn't make the landing. He absolutely refused to go down the, the, the rope. You know, they threw the thing over the side and got down into the, the landing craft. Well, you know, the boats move. They, they go up and down and move in and out. And if you had your fingers in between that thing, they just smashed the shit out of them. A lot of, a lot of guys fell when they had their hands in there and they hit and they, of course, they hurt and they let go and they fell. But uh, this guy, he was just got done his guard. He wouldn't go. He actually refused to go. He got away with it too. Now, obviously, after the war had ended, um, what was your rank, by the way, by the time you uh, corporal? You were a corporal. Did you get any three times? Three times. I got busted twice. Yeah. <laughs> Little hellmaker, weren't you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, did you did you get uh, any citations, any uh, any service you know, no. ribbons? No. no. No purple hearts. Never no. were wounded. P P purple heart. You got a purple heart. But well, I don't know where it's at. Oh, okay. So well, no, I, I moved around. I moved around so much when I come home. Uh, I didn't stay home very long. I just kept. I, you know, I was uh, I was lost too, just like a lot of a lot of servicemen come home. Well, see, what I was going to ask was when they, when when they did finally, you know, cycle you back into civilian life. Uh, you, you obviously went through San Diego, uh, Camp Pendleton again. No, no, they just kind of just gave you your papers, said here you're civilian no, again. No, they uh, they took uh, they took us uh, right off a ship. We we come in on an aircraft carrier. They land us in uh, they land us in uh, in San Diego. Took us off of there and fed us because we'd been on a boat for quite a while. They fed us, put us on a train, and headed right for Chicago. And we got discharged in in uh, San in the uh, Great Lakes. Oh, Great Lakes! Yeah, we were discharged there. Uh, had a good had a good uh, series. Uh, I uh, I suppose I can tell this off. Let me go over <laughs> Uh, I got I got wounded and I would, they they took me on a pearl and it wasn't uh, it wasn't a bad wound but everybody was getting hit and uh, they had a plane there and they as soon as they filled it they just grabbed it and they put them on a plane and took off. Tyrone Power flew the plane and I was quite damn scared he was only about fifty feet off of the water going because <laughs> he was staying under the the radar of the Japanese see. Anyway, I got in there and I got healed up because it really was a flesh wound, just like that. It didn't hit a bone or nothing. And uh, they, they fixed me up and uh, I could tell that when that uh, doctor come around in the morning, he'd look at your chart and he'd say, how are you doing today, Lions? And he was on his way. He already looked and dropped <laughs> and he was on his way. And I said, oh, I'm on my way out of here. And this, was a, this was a clean bed. You get ice cream. You get a lot of things. 
and I'm trying to figure out how in the hell am I going to stay here longer, and all at once it hit me, and I when he come up one day and he took that chart, looked at it, and dropped down, I said, how are you doing today, lines on his way? I said, okay, but, what do you mean, but? He turned around and come back, and I said, you know, my tonsils are putting pressure on my eardrums, and that bothers me. Uh, he said, let me see. And uh, he looked at me, he said, yeah, you are big. He says, yeah, right, I'll take them off. We'll take them off before you leave. So I got two more weeks. <laughs> So there we start the same routine over and over again. And I was thinking, what the hell can I do? Well, I, you know, I've never been circumcised. And when he walked away, I said, everything but, what's the matter now, Corp? I says, I, I, I've never been circumcised, and that bothers me when I can't take a bath. He says, I don't doubt that. But you're on your way out of here. You're going back to your outfit. They're training now. And uh, two days later, I was gone. <laughs> but you know what? He put that on my knuckle medical record. And I got in the Great Blakes. They was going to hold me there to do that. And this was this is a Christmas Eve coming up. And I says, you are like hell. I <laughs> says, I'm going home with the discharge or without it. Don't make no difference to me. I'm going home. Because I hadn't been home four days. I mean, four years, see. Captain looked at me and he, he says, I don't blame you. He handed me my discharge the way I went. So now earlier you had said that once you had once you had gotten out, you, you were kind of lost. Oh, yeah. Just like most of, most other veterans. Just like but just like um, most but you uh, just moved it, around but you know town uh, to town. I listened to these guys talk over there about suicide, suicide. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, uh, I don't doubt that they have a lot of that, but you know what? The parents has a lot to do with that. Now, uh, you know, uh, my boy, I have, I have a boy that went through Vietnam, and he come back home and he, he, he was, he just sat in a chair all the time looking around. And I worked with him, you know. I'd, I'd say, hey, take my, take me to work, take my car and go, go someplace. He'd, he'd go and take my car and go around my night. Well, I worked with him, and I got him out of it. And he uh, finally he took my car and one day and. He brought it back, and I went to go to work, and I got halfway to work, and I run out of gas. He <laughs> run down the out of gas. So I told him, I, got, I was upset, and I got home that night, and I says, now, if you want a car, you go buy it, because you ain't using mine no more. And he went out and bought himself a car, and uh, he, bought, he bought one, and uh, he, uh, it was a second-hand car. And, uh, he didn't have a lot of money. The seat moved on him all the time. It rested out underneath. And uh, one Saturday morning, I was home, and he was out there trying to fool with it. I went out there, and I said, "What are you doing?" And he's telling, he's showing me, telling me, "Well, that damn thing was just where I could see. It got down underneath, and I could see it was rusted." Well, I worked for Omar Baking Company at that time, and I says, "Come on, let's let's go up to the branch." I, I'll, uh, I'll have John put it, that's a mechanic up there, he put it up on a hoist. He took one up there and they put it on a hoist and he says, hell yes, well, it's all, it's all rusted out. So he went with a plate on there and put holes down there and the seat was solid when he got done. Thanks, Dad. It started to bring him out. You got to work with these mm -hmm. kids when they come home. You can't just let them run. My old man, I, I took off and I went to Peoria. He wanted Peoria is about, oh, 55 mile away. Oh, and Donna shit, I was drunk for three days, <laughs> you know, just roaming around. And one day I woke up and said, what the hell am I doing here? And I went home and, and found me a job and went to work. Now, um, one thing I wanted to ask too is, that when did you meet your lovely wife? Well, see, I've been married before. You've been married before? Yeah, I wasn't married. My wife died. Uh, my first wife died. Okay. And I have uh, three kids by her. Well, that's what I was going to say. Is uh, were you were you married before you entered? When then were you enlisted in the Marines, or did you marry after you got out of the Marines? Uh, after, I married right after I got out. Married right after you got out. Yeah, I got uh, I got uh, I got two uh, two girls and a boy. And, uh, and my wife died, and I stayed I stayed single for a 